Om Namo Narayanaya. We're starting a new chapter now. This is called Of Living Like a Wife in the part of the Kama Sutra about courtesans. When a courtesan is living as a wife with her lover, she should behave like a chaste woman and do everything to his satisfaction. Her duty in this respect, in short, is that she should give him pleasure, but should not become attached to him, though behaving as if she were really attached. Now the following is the manner in which she is to conduct herself, so as to accomplish the above-mentioned purpose. She should have a mother dependent on her own, one who should be represented as very harsh, and who looked upon money as her chief object in life. In the event of there being no mother, then an old and confidential nurse should play the same role. The mother or nurse on their part should appear to be displeased with the lover and forcibly take her away from him. The woman should always show pretended anger, dejection, fear, and shame on this account, but should not disobey the mother or nurse at any time. She should make out to the mother or nurse that the man is suffering from bad health and making this a pretext for going to see him, she should go on that account. She is, moreover, to do the following things on pur for the purpose of gaining the man's favor. Sending her female attendant to bring the flowers used by him on the previous day in order that she may use them herself as a mark of affection. Also, asking for the mixture of betel nut and leaves that have remained uneaten by him, expressing wonder at his knowledge of sexual intercourse, and the several means of enjoyment used by him, learning from him the sixty-four kinds of pleasure mentioned by Bavraya, continuing practicing the ways of enjoyment as taught by him and according to his liking, keeping his secrets, telling him her own desires and secrets, concealing her anger, never neglecting him on the bed when he turns his face toward her, touching any parts of his body according to his wish, kissing and embracing him when he is asleep, looking at him with apparent anxiety when he is wrapped in thought or thinking of some other subject than herself, showing neither complete shamelessness nor excessive bashfulness when he meets her or sees her standing on the terrace of her house from the public road, hating his enemies, loving those who are dear to him, showing a liking for that which he likes, being in high or low spirits according to the state that he is in, expressing a curiosity to see his wives, not continuing her anger for a long time, suspecting even the marks and wounds made by herself with her nails and teeth on his body to have been made by some other woman, keeping her love for him unexpressed by words but showing it by deeds and signs and hints remaining silent when he is asleep, intoxicated or sick, being very attentive when he describes his good actions and reciting them afterwards to his praise and benefit, giving witty replies to him as he be sufficiently attached to her, listening to all his stories except those that relate to her rivals, expressing feelings of dejection and sorrow if he sighs, yawns, or falls down, pronouncing the words, long live when he sneezes, pretending to be ill, or to have the desire of pregnancy when she feels dejected, abstaining from the praising the good qualities of anybody else, and from censuring those who possess the same faults as her own man, wearing anything that may have been given to her by him, abstaining from putting on her ornaments, and from taking food when he is in pain, sick, low-spirited, or suffering from misfortune, and condoling and lamenting with him over the same wishing to accompany him if he happens to leave the country himself, or if he be banished from it by the king, expressing a desire not to live after him, telling him that the whole object and desire of her life was to be united with him, offering previously promised sacrifices to the deity when he acquires wealth or has some desire fulfilled, or when he has recovered from some illness or disease, putting on ornaments every day, ha uh, not acting too freely with him, reciting his name and the name of his family in her songs, placing his hand on her loins, bosom, and forehead, and falling asleep after feeling the pleasure of his touch, 
sitting on his lap and falling asleep there, wishing to have a child by him, desiring not to live longer than he does, abstaining from revealing his secrets to others, dissuading him from vows and fasts by saying, let the sin fall upon me, keeping vows and fasts along with him, when it is impossible to change his mind on the subject, telling him that vows and fasts are difficult to be observed, even by herself, when she has any dispute with him about them, looking on her own wealth and his without any distinction, abstaining from going to public assemblies without him and accompanying him when he desires to go to pub, uh, when he desires for her to do so, taking delight in using things previously used by him and in eating food that he has left uneating, venerating his family, his disposition, his skill in the arts, his learning, his caste, his complexion, his native country, his friends, his good qualities, his age, and his sweet temper, asking him to sing and to do other such-like things, if able to do them, going to him without paying any regard to fear, to cold, to heat, or to rain, saying with regard to the next world that he should be her lover even there, adapting her tastes, disposition, and actions to his liking, abstaining from sorcery, disputing continually with her mother on the subject of going to him, and when forcibly taken by her mother to some other place, expressing her desire by taking poison, by starving herself to death, by stabbing herself with some weapon, or by hanging herself, and lastly assuring the man of her constancy and love by means of her agents and receiving money herself, but abstaining from any dispute with her mother with regard to pecuniary matters. We will pause this chapter here and continue in another video. A thought come to me while I was reading it. On my own relationship with my girlfriend, we've known each other seven years as of the making of this video. And I've been accused of having an ego or, or you know, boastful or whatever. I always say, well, I've tried to promote my stuff, my books, my things, and if I don't do it, nobody else will. So if I'm boastful because I have a lot of books that I'd like people to buy, that I really like, you can see the link down below. Well, I'm really just trying to share what I've done that I want others to do and maybe to make some money because we'd like to buy a house someday. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really just, it's not really an ego thing. That's my excuse. I try not to be an arrogant fool. I don't go around telling people how I'm better than them or all this other stuff. I really don't. Um, I'm the first to break down in tears with any sadness happens. But she says I have an ego and I'm arrogant, whatever. That's fine. But my girlfriend does like to say to me, yeah, I don't like to feed your ego. And I'm like, okay, that's fine, because I can feed it myself. But if she followed this chapter, my ego would be huge. Oh my god, it would be so huge. You'd think I'm boastful and arrogant or egotistical or um, anything else now? Oh my god. This chapter is all about making your man as... Hu is, is, is making him have the biggest head in the world with no failures, no nothing. And to, to, to... Oh my god, it's too much. Even I'm like, no, please don't. I, I mean, my ego is one thing, but I do understand I have it under control but this this chapter oh my god if my girlfriend did that to me I actually don't think I would trust her because it feels so manipulative it just so manipulative again though if you're a courtesan you're looking for money not love so I guess it's kind of okay but I just wonder how a modern translation of this book moves this over if they even bother to or maybe they probably don't. And maybe they translate it as here's how to be a good wife, which is a completely bad translation. Um, but, wow. Yeah, just, hmm, ponderous. Okay, we will end there.